In this video, I'll show you how to design and animate a bar graph like this in Adobe XD. I'm starting with an iPhone 12 sized artboard, which is 390 by 844 pixels. On the left are some screenshots from the Apple Health app. This is the inspiration for the design and animation we'll be walking through. By selecting the artboard and pressing I on your keyboard, you pull up the eyedropper, and I'm pulling a color from the current Apple Health app design. Tap R on the keyboard to bring up the rectangle tool and start drawing out the basis for the bar graph. We want these to be evenly spaced. With the line tool, I'm adding in some faint indicator lines for the bar graph. These will be dashed lines and a lighter gray than the background. Right now, I'm using a 0.5 sized line with dash and gap set to 2. Adjust the spacing so that it's even between the bar, the dashed line, and the next bar. Use T to bring up the text tool and add measurement numbers for your graph. In this example, I'm adding 0, 5,000, 10,000, and 15,000 to signify amount of steps per day. To evenly distribute these text boxes, Select all of them and in the right hand corner choose Distribute Vertically. This distributes the spacing evenly from the top and bottom text boxes. I'm adding in another horizontal indicator line by copying one of the vertical ones and rotating it 90 degrees. Select all of the bars and then use Command Shift Right Bracket to bring the bars in front of the indicator line or right click and select bring to front. After selecting all of the bars, I'm going in and changing the color. I think I'm gonna go with a purple. I'm also switching from a solid color to a linear gradient, just to add a little more interest to the design. I'll adjust the second color of the gradient, which is on the bottom here, to be a slightly darker purple, so there's a nice gradation from the bright to the darker purple. And of course the bars in your bar graph shouldn't all be the same level, there is data here. So we'll change this to reflect a different amount of steps per day over the last seven days. It still feels like the indicator lines are a little bit too overpowering, so I'm gonna go in and decrease the size to 0.25 and change the dash to three, but keep the gap at two. This just kind of varies the dash line a little bit more. A longer dash with less space in between. And I'll also adjust the gray to be a little bit darker so that it fades a little bit more. I'm adding in more text here to add the days of the week. Adding some guidelines here to make sure that the design is well centered within. To add a little bit more contrast, I'm making the background a little bit darker. The numbers on the right side of the graph felt a little bit large, so I decreased them to be more of the size of the day of the week on the x-axis. Now to design the average step section that also includes the date for the last seven days and the amount of steps. I'm adding in that top navigation section to include summary, steps, and add data. This is part of the iOS design, but you'll need to include it to provide context for whatever app you're designing. I'm also adding in this section where a user can toggle between the day, week, month, and year time period. I felt like using just the first letter of the word was a bit too vague, so in my design I decided to just write it out entirely. So day, week, month, and year. I'm keeping it highlighted on week since this is the weekly view. I decided to change the design a little bit for the section of the average steps and instead lead with the date on the top followed by the amount of steps with average steps to the right. It seemed to make more sense than how it's currently designed. I just didn't like how there was a mix of uppercase and lowercase. It doesn't feel as cohesive to me. So this is the basis of the design, but I also need to design the little section that pops up when you hover over a one of the days and see the steps for that day. I'm grabbing a lot of the text sizes and styles I already created to create this 
And once you're good with the design, be sure to group it so that you can easily move it. This step isn't necessary, but I went ahead and designed a screen for each of the hover states of Monday through Sunday. This was helpful for me to visualize where that little pop-up would show up for each of the days and customize the steps and the date. Then I went and copied each one and pasted it to my original artboard, which is where I will create the hover animation. To prototype a hover state for each one of these, we'll have to turn each of them into a component. So starting with Monday, we'll select the bar, the indicator line, and the pop-up with the amount of steps, and use keyboard shortcut Command K to create a component, or right-click and choose Make Component. You'll notice now there is a green box around it with a triangle in the top left-hand corner. This reminds you that this is a component. I'm going to rename my components as I go just to keep myself sane. So in this case, I'm going to change it to Monday. Under Component, we need to press the plus button to add another state and choose Hover State. From here, we have to adjust how we want the design to look in the default versus the hover state. Select default state first. And in this case, we wanna double click into our component and hide the indicator line with the pop-up by adjusting it to a 0% transparency. Then we'll switch to hover state and do the opposite. Double click into the component and then turn the opacity for the indicator line and pop-up back to 100% because we want these to appear when you hover over. You always want to double check by toggling between the default and hover state to make sure it appears as you intend it to. One component down. Now we need to apply the same process to each of the other ones from Tuesday through Sunday. When you're done, you should have seven components. In the left-hand corner, switch from design to prototype mode. Here, I just want to point out the default settings when you are creating hover states. You'll notice that the trigger is set to hover, auto animate is automatically chosen as the action type, destination is hover state, and you can adjust the easing and duration to whatever you like, but here we're just gonna leave it at the default, which is ease out and 0.3 seconds. Now let's go into preview mode and test out our prototype. You'll notice that not all of the hovers are exactly accurate. This is due to the fact that wherever your component is, anywhere within that green box, will trigger the hover state. So you'll notice how when I hover over one day to the next, it's not a seamless experience. Unfortunately, this is how component and hover states currently work in Adobe XD. Hopefully they're working on updates to help make this more accurate, but for now, this is the best way we can prototype a bar graph and add hover states to give more information for the graph. If you found this design and prototype tutorial helpful, give it a like and subscribe for more. I'll also leave links to some other Adobe XD tutorials in the description box, as well as on screen here.